Yeah, my name is Chase, just Chase, and I am the PR director for Twitch. As PR director, my role is working with all of the media, and that's two forms, it's being proactive and reactive. So that's everything from fielding any requests or questions we get from reporters, and it's the other side is me reaching out to reporters to ensure that they're aware of our brand, covering our news, and what I love most is getting them to write about our broadcasters because that's really the heart and soul of our platform. So my background dates back to the 90s. I was initially a freelance video game reviewer. I really just did it, just get free games. And then in 99, I went in-house to do public relations at a PR agency. And uh, the first project I had was the Sega Dreamcast. And so I worked with Sega, and then after that I worked with 2K. I worked on the launch of Bioshock. I've worked with Disney Interactive on the launch of Disney Epic Mickey, Bayonetta for Sega again, and then at one point I went. To, I was working on Sony for four years from the PlayStation Move through The Last of Us, and at the same time my other client was Twitch, and at, I saw where Twitch was heading, so after 14 years at my agency I decided to go in-house and made, and became my client became my, the company I now work for. A little fun fact was the original name was going to be Zarth, that's X-A-R-T-H, um, which was sort of like the working title, and I'm so happy it never took off because then every time I'd be on the phone I'd have to say well, I'm with Zarth and have to say that's with an X not a Z. Um, and another fun fact was Twitter was almost named Twitch, which who knows that could have made us Zarth. But, um, but you know, the Twitch was a great gaming term because Twitch-based gaming is a type of game play style. And it was easy to remember, it was one word, and the the domains were available, that helped too, that was important. Early on, the biggest challenge was explaining Twitch to people. Now, every, ever since we got acquired by Amazon, um, it's really put the uh, big global spotlight on who we are. It forced people to really go, what is Twitch? Why is this such a phenomenon? So the first challenge was, this is what Twitch is. The second thing is explain to people that Twitch represents the entire video game ecosystem. Esports is huge right now. Everything that's happening in esports is happening on Twitch, but that's still half of the content. We have all these other things that are happening. E3, press conferences, um, publisher developers doing demo. Esports is just competitive gaming, and we're all gaming. Right now, Twitch is influencing purchasing decisions. Right now, when somebody wants to buy a game, they're more likely to go to Twitch than to go read a review or go to a traditional media website. Traditionally, consumers would have to watch a glossy trailer. And trailers can be very misleading. You know, you don't know if it's actual gameplay footage. It can be very glossy and very orchestrated. But if you go and watch somebody play through an hour of a game, you really get a solid idea of what that game is about. And you could also ask the guy, broadcaster, what do you think of the game? And then other people in chat will give you their feedback. You can really get to the heart and soul of what a game is about and whether it's something you want to have. That's why right now every major publisher and developer has a Twitch channel. Obviously a lot of things are going more digital nowadays. Mobile keeps growing. I think streaming is definitely going to be a big part of the future of the gaming industry. Nowadays I think when people are developing games now, they're also developing them with spectatorship in mind. How is this going to be a game that's going to be good for the viewers? Maybe it'll have a spectator mode and other certain aspects that make it more relevant to the viewing audience. The way we keep ahead, it's, well, I mean, there's a, several things we do, and it's not so much, I mean, the way we look at it is, you know, one, we keep iterating on our core product, and it's, I think everything we do begins with one simple question. How is this beneficial for the broadcaster? And that informs every decision we make. And we look at what do the broadcasters need to be successful? You know, one, they need to be, they need to be able to make a living off this. So we, we, we launched our partnership program. And it's not just giving them money for ads. We've enabled them to offer subscriptions to their channels. Uh, we've rolled out a partnership with Teespring, so now they can do merchandising. And it's right in their dashboard. So that means all they have to do is provide the image and everything else is turnkey from how they post on social media to getting them printed and all that. So they don't have to worry about any of that. They can just focus on doing what they're doing best, which is being a, a caster. And innovation comes in two forms. It's one with Twitch. We, we want to be everywhere the gamers are at. So that inspires us to try and make partnerships and integrations with different hardware and software brands. You know, most recently, you know, we, we just launched our Roku app. And that was sort of, you know, following on the footsteps of Amazon Fire TV and Chromecast and our integrations into the hardware consoles. It's really put us into every living room. Um, other innovations, we're constantly looking at new feature sets. What you have to understand about Twitch is we primarily hire from the community. So half of our staff, if not more, are actual broadcasters. So we understand what the community's needs are because we are the community internally. So if they're saying we want this type of feature functionality, 
um, it's something we push to get in there. We just also just launched uh, a, a private chat messaging in our platform where when you're in chat you can send what's called a whisper and have a direct interaction that's private with the broadcaster or other people in chat. We impact esports in a number of ways. First off, we have every major esports event is on Twitch. So, uh, and the bigger thing about that is, is that not only are they all broadcast, but they're broadcast globally. And when we became a global platform, what it did was it made more people aware of these games and got more people interested and involved. And so before we had all these disparate groups that were really localized in what they were doing, and now we've created this big global audience for esports, and that's really helped drive the trend. I always like to say you can be the best gamer in the world or the worst gamer in the world and still make a living on Twitch. And that's because you don't have to be great if you can engage and uh, entertain your audience. So if you look at the, the, the US, for example, half of American homes have one if not two consoles in it. That's a lot of gamers and many more people have games on their phones. So there's a lot of people out there, if they just give broadcasting a shot, they're going to see how fun it is. And you never know, that could be their career.